Friday Rumble. Marion Mood War, David Menzies, hello. And I have to, I have to share this with you that uh, Marion was doing a little dance before we I came was, to uh, I'm getting limbered up in the Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay a dollar to see again? that. Uh, Let's move on. <laughs> now, uh, you'll never be unemployed, which is a bit of a segue because it's now been announced that uh, the, the unemployed... Now, I, I believe in a civilised society, for goodness sake, people who are unemployed, we should help them. But at the same time, there's a certain reciprocation here. And there's an equation going on. And you are meant to search for a job. By the way, it has long been the case that there'll be a knock on the door to test if someone actually is looking for a job. I have personal experience. Someone who was living in the house we bought some years ago he was working for the person who sold us the house and claiming unemployment. But now they're going to make it more formal. And of course, this means it's just like living under Stalin or Hitler. Have a look at this, please. <laughs> 1,200 EI users from across the country have been randomly selected for the audit. Some have already received home visits. Others live in fear. The so-called EI police are coming. A lot of people are afraid right now. It's intimidation. There's no other word there. What's next? Is it going to be ankle bracelets? Well, this latest push to find fraud comes even as the number of people drawing employment insurance in Canada is dropping. What is next? Ankle bracelets? No, I think it'll be the Holocaust, actually. <laughs> David, this is such sensationalist, emotional journalism. The idea that people live in fear. They're being given money. They're supposed to spend their time, within reason, trying to look for a job. If they're not, I'm afraid there'll be some consequences. Michael, this is a perfect indicator of the culture of entitlement that we have today. Um, and it's not a matter of, if you've lost your job, well, I'll find whatever job's out there. Now it's, well, you know what? That job doesn't quite match my criteria. Look at that fool, that woman in Prince Edward Island uh, earlier this month, who was having a protest, a roadside protest. Well, I thought you meant Deborah Coyne. Because, well, <laughs> well, her too. But her EI benefits uh, were under threat. This is a woman who does have access to a job, but she doesn't like the commute. It'll be like a 38-minute commute, evidently, and, uh, you know, she, she needs her beauty sleep. Michael, as you know, I have a source who is in the welfare system in Toronto. Oh, that's right. And yeah. the welfare fraud that goes on would make your viewers turn white. And here's one of the really <laughs> scariest... <laughs> yeah, well, well, if you're not white, you'll turn... Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the, <laughs> what, what I'm getting at is people go, well, how can this be? How can the system be cheated that way? And this person is basically a heretic because she goes by the rules. She goes yeah. by the guidelines. The people, the caseworkers, aid and abet the recipients. Marion, if you've worked hard, you've paid into a system and you lose your job, is there any possibility, though, at this stage, you'll feel somehow humiliated and marginalized because I'm trying to get a job. I don't, I don't need someone picking me at random to come and give me a hard time. Well, I think you need to have the audit. There's no question because people will abuse the system. But I'm, I question the value of the method, a home visit. It does seem uh, to be, frankly, intimidating to people. So how do you know if you visited them at home and they happen to be home, what does that tell you? Does that tell you that they weren't out an hour ago looking a for a job? Uh, if they're home, does that, if they're not home, are they working? Does, it doesn't tell you anything. I don't think they're going to be so, arrested just because they're at home. No, they're going to be asked a question. Yeah, so, well, pick up the phone. Bring them in for, a, for an interview. I, I, don't, I don't understand what the value of the home visit will get that yeah. any other questions won't. Are they going to follow these people around to see what they're doing during the day? I don't know. No, they will ask a question. I'm sure they'll be quite gentle about it. But <clears throat> look, I, we so had... So ask the question. Bring them into the office and ask them the same question. I, no, anecdotes by their nature are, well, anecdotal, I suppose. But mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier on when we bought... Well, um, oh, this is going back 20 years. We bought mm -hmm. our first house and there was this, uh, this uh, scum, frankly... Uh, he was living in the basement. He, he was living there rent-free so he could work for the people who sold the house to us. He was claiming unemployment. Mm -hmm. Someone came to our house and said, do you know this person? And I said, yeah, he was. And, and she, I, think he, I think he's working, you know. And she said, yeah, we thought he was. I mean, so, you've got to catch people who are harmed. We had so, two people so knocking. Is, we, had two, we had two different public servants knocking in our door because our driveway didn't quite fit the requirements of the local council. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm afraid living in, in urban society, sometimes you, you may be visited by the state. So, yes, if there is value that can be gleaned from a home visit that can't I'll, be gleaned in other, any I'll other way, I'm telling you, I'll tell you that how. is not, you're not getting no, good information. Because what does it tell well, you if they're home or not You're not home? in the field, Mary Ann Mead Ward. You don't know what's going on there. I remember uh, the financial post uh, many years ago did an expose, I think it was Diane Francis, and I believe one of the anecdotes was somebody that was collecting welfare, it could just as easily have been unemployment insurance, Michael, and in the meantime, 
uh, working as a delivery for a florist and raking for cash money. A florist? Rake, Raking in forty thousand dollars a year in right. addition to the benefits. That's why you'd go to the home. See so, if this person's what, working so that, under the that table. That is a larger issue that has only a little bit to do with right. me. I, that's you just want to pick up the I want, I want to move on and have some empathy. This man has been unemployed most of his working life, for goodness <laughs> sake. Um, <laughs> old people shouldn't be allowed to drive cars. Yeah, I, I, this, is, this came out of Sudbury, where so many good things do, <laughs> including the roads, of course. <laughs> and but, swag. Uh, older people who may uh, be too old to be good drivers. Well, okay, if they are, then they shouldn't be driving a car. But a snitch line has been set up specifically to report older drivers. That well, seems a bit unfair. Well, why just, why just the older drivers? I agree. Why, 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 don't not, we have a, why not people like you, David? Well, no, why don't we have a snitch line, I don't know, for, say, uh, Chinese women driving gray Corollas? I mean, you'll have to hire a call center in India to process those calls, brother, when you're driving up the 404. You just you know. <laughs> to no, I, 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 Listen, I'm just saying Anymore what I see. How many Chinese, Chinese women drive gray Corollas? <laughs> oh, too many, Michael. And they're all merging onto the 404 doing 30 kilometers an okay, hour. So when I'm driving, I'm glad you would bring a refreshing yeah, common sense morning. approach <laughs> to any controversial issue. <laughs> and, and how about, you know, the, the tuner sets, you know, how about, uh, you know, I, I mean, David, I can go on. How about white middle-aged guys who own four different cars who, drive, <laughs> who offer to drive me home and I say, I, I want to leave the car before we leave the car park because you drive like a maniac. Well, first of all, we don't call it a car park here. You know, we call it a parking lot. And secondly, I'll tell you how useless this line is. Last year, Michael, I saw a guy, he was a young guy, a young white guy yeah. in a, a tricked up car, weaving like crazy, doing 100 kilometers an hour in Young Street on Richmond Hill, uh, talking on the cell phone, went through an intersection, stopped, almost caused an accident, re reversed, almost caused another accident. The guy was, it was almost like it was impaired. Did you report him? I did. And they go, well, you know what, we don't right. really handle stuff Marianne, like that. Good um, old York Region the, Police, the, good stuff. The I think people can and do report uh, poor driving. I mean, mm. I, one, traffic is actually one of the one of the bigger complaints that I hear about from people: speeding, missing uh, stop signs. Going, I'm complaining. Yeah, there's too that, much traffic. <laughs> well, there's that too. All but right. that people have a legitimate concern, and so and the police actually ask people to uh, report when there's bad driving okay. because. Yeah. But to say only elderly drivers exactly. uh, should be snitched what on is wrong. I drive a minivan. What what uh, what manufacturer? It's Ford. Ford. Okay. Yeah. Camera, please. Is that Camera. all right? Camera. I'd like to report a <laughs> Ford minivan. Wait a minute, you. Hey, back. I'll come to, I'll come to our defense. Back in a few moments. Lock the minivan. Be quiet. Lock Actually, their motion uh, uh, tries to to, to incur, help uh, illegal immigrants to stay in Canada, and we think that's the wrong message to send. Uh, we think we should be sending the message that if you're here illegally, look, Canada is an open and generous country. All we ask is that you respect our laws. So if you're here illegally, please respect our laws and go back to your country. If you want to come back to Canada, make get in the same line as everyone else. Well said. For goodness sake, yes, yes, yes. We're a civilized country and a generous people here. But this is Toronto City Council has nothing else to do, apparently. Everything works perfectly. So these dunderheads have now said that Toronto is a sanctuary city. There are several of these in the United States, by the way. Now, the reality is there's been a, a don't ask policy. There are, there are illegal workers in the city of Toronto, as there is where you are now. I guarantee there are illegal workers. Some of them Hotel workers, for example, their minimum wage, maybe people in the city won't take those jobs. I don't know. But the police generally have don't ask questions. Hospitals don't ask questions. But now officially red light flashing Toronto is a sanctuary city. So if you come here illegally, unlike all the legal immigrants, then you can claim all the services. You're pointing at me, David. Yeah, because what you I, I'm a citizen, honestly. <laughs> no, what you said, you repeated one of the oft-repeated lies about granting the sanctuary city. Oft-repeat the answer. Well, well, it's this idea that, oh, well, there's the, the jobs that, you know, the people here already won't do, uh, you know, the, the so-called dirty jobs. Well, Michael, when you have 600,000 Ontarians unemployed and they are accommodated through unemployment, welfare, it, that is the problem. You get rid of those benefits and you make those people do so those jobs cut welfare and unemployment well, listen oh this goodness. is no i'm saying why do we have jobs begging 
and at the same time, there are people on welfare getting a free handout, doing nothing but eating Cheetos and watching the Jerry Springer show while, all day. While driving. You know, and, the, and the, the, the while gray driving driving a silver knows car. that they're all sitting at <laughs> yeah. home eating yeah. Cheetos because he's knocked on their door. No, no, David, David, <laughs> David if, if, if I may, I would agree. Welfare is a little different, but certainly on unemployment, there are some difficult jobs and it is minimum wage. But my response is, I'm sorry, do that job for a while and eventually move on, come off unemployment. I agree with you, I but agree. the reality is... You know, in hotels in particular, not only in this country, this is international in the, in the Western world, there are a lot of people who are in countries illegally because they will work, and it's very hard work, for minimum wage. You know that. Yeah, well, they're criminals. By definition, I think the they employers are, are as well. And, 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 we, and the idea that we are going to acquiesce to these aliens and give them... Uh, aliens? Full, well, illegal aliens. Oh, that's I thought they have special so, powers. They can ray beam us, can't they? Well, anyway, Superman does, I we guess. We have to so separate out um, what is actually being decided here. And I think the immigration minister's remarks were quite inflammatory. The Toronto, the Toronto sanctuary statement has nothing to do with compelling federal or provincial services to be provided to folks that have um, some economic. No, this is about <laughs> Toronto. Area, this is about Toronto municipal services. So Such transit. As? Library uses, uh, perhaps some access to Marin, social service. Marin, Marin, this, is, Marin. this is not it's about, not about giving borrowing PI. war and peace from the library. It's about going to a hospital. Is that municipal and getting health care that costs a fortune and never paying for it? Yeah. So there are. So yeah, we don't card people for their ability to pay when they come in and they need our help. If they're so citizens. So we we. Not if they're, we don't ask they've for never a passport paid a, They've never either. paid any taxes so you, and they'll you, get thousands of dollars of medical them, help. Other treat, people are in a line. You treat them first and then you sort out their immigration <laughs> status and you bill them later. People come in yeah, and get treatment. Yeah. People get treatment in hospitals uh, from, that are visiting from other countries and we do treat them first. We take care of their health yep. first, and then we build them. So you can do the yep. same thing with, and they tend to with pay. people. Do you with think people are here illegally anyway? We'll do that. Status. So they're under the same laws. This, yeah. they are uh, under uh, the uh, same if laws. I may ask, if and I so can... this is about being compassionate because most yeah. of the people, most, do it on your just own hang dime. on. Most of the people that are being that are suffering right now are people that are uh, victims of human trafficking, men and women. And Baloney. they cannot Most, speak out. They uh, cannot good. get Marianne, any access that's to services. Not true. Marianne, well, can, can it I, is can true. I, can and I, can that's I, the side of it that you don't want to look at. It, it, no, no. I'll, uh, if I may, can I have your address right now? I got my pen out. What's your address? I'm giving you my oh, address. Oh, you know, really? Because I was going to drop by tonight, uh, uh, let myself in, working. go to your ice box, take out a T-bone, have a six-pack of beer, watch your TV. You don't mind, do you? That's I mean, so David, 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 David. You know, be realistic. There's no way she's going to have meat and alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and the little meat board live in a gay, multicultural, vegan society you don't, you don't where we don't kill cows, right? <laughs> you know, look, I, th surely there is a, a middle way here. We, we are compassionate. But yes. If, if I may, another anecdote. You mentioned that I overturned a car a few years ago. <laughs> my, poor mom, my poor mom, God rest her soul, was in that. I mean, she didn't die. But we had to go to the hospital for a checkup. And at the end of it, she, she wasn't a Canadian uh, at the hospital. I said, shall I pay now? And they looked at me as though I what? Yeah, so they yeah, didn't but, know her status. No, 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 no. Oh, Not what they were saying was the idea that you would pay for what you've just been given. We've never come across that before. They would bill you. They would expect you not to pay. They have entire groups, organizations, to try and get the money from people who've taken the health care. And if you're illegal, they'll never trace you. Yeah, so, so health care, I think that the patient has to come first always. But let's look at what the whole sanctuary, where the word comes from, where it's been used recently in our history. What if all the... Uh, Negro folks, the black people that the were... Negro that were, Hold on, the Negro folks. The Negro folks. You can't get back in the day. Is that what they say? No, 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 how it is these days, boss? Uh, stop. Get, that's, I'm going back that's to an what okay. if, yes, Maybe big I'm in trying Burlington, to but make, not here. No, no, Negros. I'm trying to make a historical statement. So back in the day when when uh, black people were fleeing slavery and they were coming to Canada oh, and they didn't have now. papers, <laughs> they didn't have immigration status, were we going to ship them all back and say, you know, get no. in line, go no. back to your because slave they were, owner? They no, they we were gave facing, them sanctuary. They were facing brutal oppression we gave under them a grotesque yes. regime. And sanctuary where you be executed in medieval yeah. Europe. This is having yes. to get in line with all the decent legal there people. There are people that are in that line that are afraid for their life to go back to their refugees, and they don't always get in as refugees. All the emails. But, but Marianne, most of them Marianne, are thank human. You, th thank you so much. Thank you so trafficking. much for saying Negro folks. That blows my Chinese well, that's, woman that's Corolla driver right out of the water. I think it does actually. It does not. <laughs>
That's the historical period that I was referring to. So are we going Marin, to not offer oh, sanctuary Marin, nice, to nice, people Marin, that need it? Please, what, would you say this to those good, decent, hardworking people who are waiting to enter this country legally. Would you say this to those people who are living in fear, who want to come in as refugees? They're doing the legal thing. You're mm -hmm. saying to them, mm -hmm. ha, sucker. No, <laughs> of I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying, we had a case uh, it, very right. close in Hamilton where a man was a victim of human trafficking. He was enslaved. Yeah. He was locked that's in a very basement. Common. Oh, always no, happening. well, just hang yeah. on. But that's what this sanctuary is all no, about. It's not. It's for these no, it's people not. That's that he the couldn't, he couldn't say anything. Guys, he couldn't get any help or ask for advice yeah. because he okay. would have been sent back to his folks. country. It or Which country was it? It was the Ukraine. Ukraine. Yes. A democratic country with a rule of law, separation of powers. Ukraine. He couldn't get out of his house. He couldn't get out of his house. He was. Okay, you're making no, I'm sorry, somebody I'm sorry. who was enslaved and, and a victim. We of have to go. Trafficking. We're out of time, and I don't want to be on unemployment. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.